Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of the 50 Things to See with a Telescope space series. In this video, I wanted to give you my recommendations for gifts to go along with a telescope. This is Learn to Stargaze. So say you're a parent and you've just bought your kids a new telescope, or you already have a telescope and you're updating your wish list. Here are some things that you can get to vastly improve your stargazing experience and increase the enjoyment you get out of your new telescope. First, a disclaimer. With the exception of the astronomy books I've personally written, I am not affiliated with any of these brands or any of these products. I just love stargazing and I wanna share my joy for astronomy. I'll post links for most of these products, but I won't be collecting any ad revenue. Again, this is just me trying to help you get the best gift for your budding astronomer. So why listen to my recommendations? Well, between my time volunteering in astronomy outreach in California and South Carolina, and my time working at the Burke Gaffney Observatory during my undergraduate degree in astrophysics, I've personally taught thousands of people how to use entry-level telescopes. I also personally own about 15 telescopes and pretty much everything mentioned in this video. Anyway, that's enough about me. Let's get to my recommendations. Number one, zoom eyepieces. This is by far my favorite astronomy gizmo. In fact, I like it so much, I had my university buy one for every single telescope in the astronomy department. Usually you can find them for around 50 or 100 US dollars, depending on the brand. Now the zoom on the eyepiece typically ranges from 24 millimeters all the way down to eight millimeters. Now to calculate magnification, you just divide this number by the focal length of your telescope. For example, if your telescope has a focal length of 800 millimeters and you use an eight millimeter eyepiece or the eight millimeter setting, then your magnification is 100 times. Remember that with telescopes, less magnification is better for finding targets and observing most objects. Only zoom in when you want a closer look at a planet or a lunar crater. Also remember when using a zoom eyepiece, you need to refocus the telescope every time you change the magnification. You change the magnification by twisting the eyepiece. Number two, binoculars. So I like to say there's a right telescope for every target. And sometimes the right telescope is no telescope. If you live where there's dark skies, binoculars are a far better tool for observing certain objects like the Andromeda galaxy, the double cluster, the coat hanger, and a few others. In fact, you can complete the Astronomical Society of Canada's entire Explore the Universe program with just binoculars. They'll even send you a certificate and pin for free just for completing the program. If you wanna complete their astronomy program, I co-hosted the video series and I posted all 10 episodes on my website at learntostargaze.com slash shows. So which binocular should you buy? I'd have to say for stargazing, basic ones work just fine. I would get seven by fifties, seven being the magnification and 50 being the aperture, which determines how much light the binoculars gather. For an instructional video on how to use binoculars, check out video number 23 in my astronomy challenge series found on my YouTube channel, Learn to Stargaze, or simply find the video at learntostargaze.com. If you're stargazing with binoculars and using 50 things to see with a telescope, I've labeled all the best binocular targets with a little binocular symbol so that you'll know which targets to observe with that instrument. Number three, upgrade your finder to the Rigel Quick Finder. If you're like me, you absolutely hate finder scopes. You push the telescope one way and the image goes the other, or maybe you have one of these little red dot finders that come with your telescope, but you quickly realize that it's kind of shaky and doesn't always stay in the same spot. You even have to press your head up against the telescope just to use it. Well, the Rigel Quick Finder solves all these issues. It's a beautiful precision instrument that will take the stress out of finding targets in the night sky. These cost around 50 US dollars and simply stick to your telescope with a piece of double edge tape. Number four, upgrade your mount. Okay, this one could get a little expensive, but trust me, if you're getting deep into amateur astronomy, it's worth it. One of the most frustrating things about beginner telescopes are the mounts. A poorly constructed mount makes it extremely frustrating to find objects in the night sky. And if you paid less than say $300 for your telescope, that mount is probably pretty flimsy. And it's possible your telescope didn't even come on a mount, it's on a camera tripod. In which case finding targets in space might be darn near impossible without upgrading this tripod to a mount. So if you need a mount upgrade for beginner telescopes, here are two options, one for budget users and one for the enthusiast. The first is the Celestron Alt-As mount, which can usually be found for less than 100 US dollars. 
This can be attached to any telescope and offers slow motion controls for precise pointing. The second is another of my favorite astronomy tools, and that's the Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, which is about 400 US dollars. Now this is a very advanced piece of astronomy equipment that can be used as a star tracker for wide field and deep field astrophotography. You just need to add this equatorial wedge. It's also a go-to mount that can be controlled from your phone. Now this mount is hardy. Here's a picture of it at my dad's house covered in about $3,000 worth of astronomy gear and it worked flawlessly. Now, I also use this mount to test beginner telescopes when I don't want to use the mount that actually came with the telescope. Number five, lights. So whenever I stargaze, I use a variety of lights. My favorite is this red light headlamp. Now, as many of you know, you don't want to use white light while stargazing. You also don't want to use a computer or a phone either, but obviously you need some light to operate your telescope and use your astronomy books that help you find your targets. Now, any red light headlamp will do, and there's lots of those on Amazon for less than $20. Now, a regular red light flashlight also comes in handy when you're working with other people. That way, the headlamp doesn't shine in people's faces. I also carry with me some of these portable LED lights, and I use these for setting up and breaking down my astronomy gear. These cost around $20. These red light batons are pretty cool too. You use these to mark the things you don't want to trip over at night. Number six, a phone adapter. Now I feel like every budding astronomer is also a budding astrophotographer. Everyone who has a beginner telescope these days wants to put a camera on it and take epic pictures of space. Now I can tell you astrophotography is an incredibly frustrating hobby. It's also incredibly addictive. But let's say you want to take a picture like this, then you need equipment like this but you can take pretty impressive pictures of the moon or planets with any basic telescope and just a phone. So generally what you do to take an epic picture of the moon or the planets is you use your phone in video mode and take a five or six second video of the moon or the planet. Then you use special software called PIPP and another piece of software called Registax to turn that video into a very high quality image. Now I have several adapters for connecting my cell phone to the telescope and you know what? you really get what you pay for. To avoid frustration, I definitely recommend the Celestron Nex YZ, which gives you full control of the position of your phone. Number seven, sign up or gift an online astronomy course. So one year I was gifted the astronomy course Understanding the Universe by Alex Filipenko through the Great Courses. This course contained 96 lectures on basic astronomy. This ultimately motivated me to quit my job in corporate finance, go back to school, and get a degree in astrophysics. Yes, it was that good. These programs can be found online or on DVD, and they also come at various price points. And they're often on sale, deeply discounted. You could also sign up for an astronomy course on Coursera.com, which I believe are free, but allow for the option to pay to get a certificate for completing each program. Number eight, gear for exploring the moon. Now, many telescopes come with some form of moon filter, but if you don't have one of these already, you can get one for around $20. These filters just reduce the brightness and glare because, well, the moon is really bright. Now, these moon filters screw into the back of an eyepiece like this. But once you see the moon, now what? Well, to get a deep appreciation for the moon, I like to zoom in and explore the craters, valleys, mountains, and lunar seas. But how do you know what you're looking at? Well, there are two options. The first is a lunar map like this one from Orion. I have one from Sky and Telescope, but I don't believe this one's still in print. The challenge with the moon maps is that they're information overload. There's just so much there, it's hard to know what's cool to look at at any given phase in the lunar cycle. So the second option is to get a book like my book, 50 Things to See on the Moon. This book walks you through each phase of the lunar cycle day by day and highlights the best targets. It also has three views for each target. One for binoculars, one for refractor telescopes, which flip the image left to right, and one for Newtonian telescopes, which rotate the image 180 degrees. This book is also the main reason for this series winning the 2020 Simon Newcomb Award for Excellence in Science Communication from the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. Number nine, Barlow's and 90 degree diagonals. If you've bought some on a telescope, check to see if it comes with each of these because some telescopes only come with a 45 degree diagonal, and these are for looking at things on land, not for looking at things in space. 
If you want to comfortably look at things in space, you'll need to upgrade to the 90 degree diagonal option. Now, bar loads are primarily used for zooming in on planets. They work by going in between the telescope and the eyepiece. Now, these typically come in either two times magnification or three times magnification. I think a 2x Barlow is fine, and these can be found for around $30. And finally, number 10, stargazing books. What good is a telescope if you don't know how to use it or don't know what to point it at? So here are a few of my favorite astronomy books. Keep in mind, if there was an astronomy book that I wanted, but it didn't exist, I'm an author, so I wrote it. And a few of my books are on this list as well. Anyway, for the enthusiast, there's the classic book, Night Watch. Now, until my books came around, this was by far the most popular stargazing book. Night Watch covers everything, and I mean everything there is to know about amateur astronomy. The author, Terry, and I saw the Great American Eclipse together in 2017. He's an amazing person. Check out this book. For the kids, definitely consider 50 Things to See with a Telescope Kids or 50 Things to See with a Telescope, a Young Stargazer's Guide. The kids version was originally self-published and the Young Stargazer's Guide is what happens when that book gets picked up by a publisher. These books have a lot of overlap in content, so I recommend getting one or the other, but they're both great. If you think you're really gonna get into binocular stargazing, check out Binocular Highlights by Gary Saronic. This book contains hundreds of targets for binoculars, but based on my experience, you only wanna use this book if you're far, far away from city lights. If you want something inexpensive that you can toss into a large pocket, check out 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope. This is actually the first book I ever published. Now, if you want to record your progress as an amateur astronomer, and I highly recommend you do, I recommend 50 Things to See with a Telescope, the Activity Workbook. This is especially good if you're an educator or homeschool parent that are over 50 activities that you can do with your students. And if you're looking for a detailed monthly breakdown of astronomical events specific to 2021, definitely check out the 2021 Night Sky Almanac by Nicole Mortillero. Well, that's my list of the top 10 gifts to go with a telescope. If you like this video, please subscribe to Learn to Stargaze on YouTube, follow me on Twitter at Learn to Stargaze, and check out www.learntostargaze.com where I post tons of stargazing tips and tricks. If you're looking for even more gift ideas, check out my two most recent books, 50 Animals That Have Been to Space, which I co-wrote with my wonderful wife, and 50 Space Missions That Changed the World. Well, that's it for today. Have a wonderful holiday season. And remember, the future is looking up. <laughs>